Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC guy. You know, it's getting to the point where every time I tell you guys that I'm going to do something in the next video, something else pops up and I can't quite get to it. So uh, it's like one step forward and two steps back type of thing. So I'm going to stop telling you what the next video is going to be about. And today what I'm going to do is uh, continue with down the ladder and into the yard. So that'll be part two, as you can see from the title of the video. And um, enough questions came up uh, concerning how to install the turnouts uh, on the ladder and, and, and also how to uh, install the uh, blue point switch machine wires through those uh, little turnout, uh, the point, uh, uh, point uh, throw rod. So let's go ahead and take a look at that, and then we will go ahead and uh, solder the uh, turnouts together at the rail joiners and get the adhesive and get those laid and done. And uh, then we can then uh, proceed with working on the yard tracks. Um, and then after that, we will, I promise you, we will finalize those blue point controllers. So bear with me and, uh, you know, in some ways I feel like I should change the title of this series to the never ending story because it just seems to uh, go on and on and on, which I guess is fine. That's what the channel's here for, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, before we get started, I want to ask you to take a second to subscribe. Click on the subscribe box and when that comes up, click on the little bell right next to it and click all. That way you'll be notified every time that I upload a new video. So the first thing that I want to take a look at is the uh, installing a uh, installing the blue point controller uh, throw wire into the opening here in the uh, throw rod here between the two points. And let me point out that this particular one has the spring still installed. As I told you I was going to do, I used a 3 8 inch drill uh, in this position so that I, instead of the quarter inch hole uh, that uh, I previously had used, I used the 3 8 And that gave me a little bit wider throw. And fortunately, after doing that, as I'll show you in a minute, this uh, switch machine can now throw these points even though the little spring wire is still in place. So for those of you who don't want to remove your spring wires and you're going to use these or some other kind of uh, throw mechanism, uh, then try using a 3 8 inch diameter hole underneath of the uh, points here. Okay, so let me go ahead and show how you go about installing the wire up through that hole in the points. And you need two things. Obviously you need the, uh, the wire in the uh, device, and you also need a pair of, of clips, something like this. Um, uh, you might be able to use a pair of spring type uh, clothesline uh, uh, clothespins. Um, you might, I use a, um, a, a standard medical hemostat, and you can purchase these from uh, places like Micromark. You can get them on eBay and uh, th those kind of places. And you might ask your doctor or your dentist if they have some of these that they're going to be tossing out, because they do periodically replace these. And they might give you one or, or, you know, make a good price on you. I've also seen little spring clips like this, and um, you know, you might think of some other things um, that you might be able to use. Um, there are some types of, uh, of, of forceps like these that are spring loaded and close instead of, uh, and stay closed instead of open, and they could be used. But I'll show you why you need something that's going to pinch. Okay, you also, depending on how you're installing this or when you're installing this, uh, you also may need another person under the layout. And the reason for that is now, in this case, I can reach under here and easily manipulate the blue point controller from beneath without any problem because it's not that wide and far from the edge of the layout. I got the impression from the comment that I was uh, given that the individual could not do that and that uh, he had already laid his turnouts and uh, he could not uh, basically reach un far enough under the layout to put the, uh, to manipulate the switch machine. And, you know, the best thing I can say in that type of case is install your blue point controllers under the layout, up through the hole, 
and then drop the turnout in place over it. Now, if you already have the turnout installed and you're trying to do this, you know, you're going to have to have a second person under the layout feeding the wire up through for you while you look on the top and try to guide them into doing what I'm going to show you right now. So I'm going to have to zoom in here a little bit closer now that I've shown you that. And uh, we'll go ahead and, and try this. Okay, so right here is where I'm going to be installing the uh, wire here. So let me reach underneath the layout with this. And I'm going to feed it up through here. And I'll show you what I mean. So you can see that the points are starting to bounce up and down because I've got the uh, throw rod under there. And now you can see, here's the wire coming up through the... Uh, uh, through the gap between the throw rod and uh, the rest of the uh, uh, points. So what I've, I know where that is now, and the hole is about, oh, an eighth of an inch to the upper right of it. So basically what you have to do is come back down through and just move it over a little bit until it comes right up through there like that. And that's about how long it normally takes. And then once you've got it up through there so that it won't fall back out, take those hemostats and clip it. And that way it's in place. And that's all there is to it. It's a very straightforward procedure if you can do that. But I could, I could see where someone might have an area on their layout that was further than they could reach. And in those cases, like I say, you just have to have a second person uh, underneath of the layout slowly uh, pushing that little uh, wire up through the hole uh, and then gradually, very slowly, guiding it into position from above as well. And that's about all there is to it. I can't offer any other, um, any other real suggestions on how you might go about doing that. Obviously, you cannot feed the wire down through there because it, it, it would be very difficult to try to install it um, uh, under the layout into the switch machine itself. It, I think this is probably the best way to go about trying to, trying to do this. While I've got this firmly in place, I wanted to show you that the uh, mechanism will throw. So I've got it under here and there. Got to get my finger out of the way so it'll throw. But you can see it is moving the turnout without any problem at all. So that will work once you go with the uh, larger diameter hole underneath of your points. Okay, so the next step, I've already gone ahead and glued down the turnout on the upper section uh, of, the, uh, of the ladder. So the next one I want to add is this one here that diverges off to the uh, track for the goods shed itself. So the first thing we have to do, I want to point out to you, I, uh, I've installed a set of rail joiners right here. And one thing about these turnouts is, on the ends, of the, uh, of the turnout, they, uh, the, there are no spikes or, or other devices uh, cast in here on the ends. So you can just slide these uh, rail joiners or fish plates as they are referred to in the UK right in underneath there. That's not true for uh, FlexTrack, okay? And I'll show you how to go about making uh, uh, allowances for that in a minute. So what I'm going to do first is I need to apply my adhesive here so we can go ahead and get the, uh, get the turnout in place before we can go about beginning to uh, finalize the installation. Put a little bit on this side like that and a dab here and hopefully that'll do it. Okay, so this is just like I showed you previously. Now, one thing that I wanted to point out about the yard ladder, and it's critical to begin at the top and work your way down, because any changes you make along the way will alter the dynamics of how you set up the uh, tracks in the yard. Okay? If you move it a hair to the left or the right as you go down, it's not going to match up the way you set it up. So you have to go ahead and be careful about that. You can't start at the bottom and work up because things might not fit together when you get there. 
So always begin at the top, begin at the main line, turn out, and work your way down. Okay. So we've got that in place. Now, the next thing we want to do is uh, drop this feeder through all the way and get that in there. Okay. And then, right up here at this end, go ahead and what I'm going to do is feed these the ends of the rails here from the turnout into the uh, uh, rail joiners or fish plates and then slide them up. And at the same time I'm going to drop everything into final position. And you can see I've got my uh, piece of flex track here. Let me make sure. Yes. Uh, these, this is the ends of the flex track going out to the good shed. So I want to make sure those mate perfectly and that we're going to go on down the yard. Okay, get all that in there, and then got my handy dandy roller so I can get a good uh, contact here. And then put that in place, and then I have my T pins to hold everything where I want it to be. Okay. So now that'll hold everything in position until the adhesive sets up. And everything is moving freely. There, are, This is one that I took the uh, spring out of earlier. Uh, so everything's moving freely. Nothing is gummed up. We're in good shape. Now the next thing we want to do is move down. And uh, in this position, I'm going to have to use a piece of flex track that I've cut to give me the distance that I need between the end of this turnout and the beginning of the next one in the line. So that's what we'll do next. What I've done with this, and I'll show you, uh, here we've got the, uh, uh, what would normally be tie heads in North America. These are the parts of what is called the chairs in the English or the UK uh, uh, types of, of, of uh, track. But at any rate, what I've done here is you just take your knife and slide it down between the rails and here and snip off that plastic. Just the last set here. And that's all it takes. And then you can just slide the end here. Let me get around here. Then you'll be able to slide this into position. Okay, But first I've got to get the uh, adhesive. One thing I want you to notice though, let me see. I think this goes at the other end. Let me try this here. Well, it probably doesn't matter. Okay. So I'll go ahead and slide that back into position. Now one thing you will need to do is because these ties overlap uh, at this point, you have to slice them ends off here so that you can insert this piece of track in place uh, without interfering with the uh, the other uh, rail here. And you know there are several places on the ladder where you'll have to do that. And that's just part of working with uh, flex track. Okay. So let me move these back just a little bit to get that gap opened up. And then what I'm going to do is go ahead and we need to install this here with the uh, with the uh, cement or the adhesive. So let me get that started. Okay, let's try marking first so that I don't go too far. Okay, we're only going to go that far. So it's not a, a long section to have to uh, do. Okay, and now I'm going to go ahead and get that smoothed out. Okay, that's enough and I'll keep that. I can probably use it in a second. Okay, so let me slide this into place. There we go. It was riding on top of it instead of in it. Okay, there it is. Now. Got that one done. 
What I want to do first now is uh, go ahead and do the next section. Okay, so this is the final turnout on the ladder. It's the one that leads off to the uh, cattle uh, pen and down to the good shed, uh, or below the good shed on this end. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and apply my, uh, apply my liquid nails and we'll get that set up and get everything joined here. Okay. Okay, so that's got that in place. So let me go ahead and we'll drop this final turnout into place. Okay, right here, start. Okay. And bring that down to the uh, rail joiners, drop those into place, and there we have it. Okay, so we've got the, uh, got everything set up right down to where it's going to connect to the uh, piece of track at the end here. And let me roll everybody into place here. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and pin everybody so they'll stay put while the cement is, or adhesive is setting up. Because the next thing we're going to want to do is solder these rail uh, joiners or fish plates together so that you get a good electrical uh, co connection uh, through these uh, connections here. But I can't do that. I'm going to let it dry first. I don't want to go messing with these until uh, such time as the, the, the adhesive is set up. Okay, so um, I've given it time to set up, and so now let's go ahead. One thing I wanted to show that I haven't done yet uh, is how to go about soldering these rail joiners here, and, or fish plates, so that uh, you get a good electrical connection, because, you know, this kind of connection is very unreliable. Uh, I've had sections uh, that I've been testing track where, uh, you know, they're joined by a couple of rail joiners, and the locomotives won't run at all. Uh, you have to have a good electrical connection uh, between these pieces of rail for everything to work right. And uh, a solder connection is the way to go about doing that. So let me go ahead and show you how I go about doing uh, those type of connections. Okay, I'm going to put my heat sinks on either side of the point where I'm going to be soldering. And the, you know, the value of the heat sinks or the role of the heat sinks is they intercept and draw away any amount of excess heat being applied here before it goes out and melts the ties. Now there's nothing I can do about this one. It's probably going to get a little bit damaged by some heat. But we can live with that. Uh, one way to do this is to cut this tie off and then after you finish doing your soldering to go ahead and uh, slide it back in, in place underneath of the rail joiners. But I, I want to see if I can get this to go without having to do that. So let me get my soldering iron and um, clean it a little bit since it's been off for a while. And we should be ready to go. Yeah, okay, that's ready to go. Okay, so what I'm going to do is then I want to get my solder so that it will fit right against the, tie, the uh, web of the rail because I want this solder to flow down into the gap between the rail joiner or fish plate itself and the rail. Uh, and to do that, I'm just going to, you know, heat it up enough so that it will melt that solder and let it flow down in. 
And you don't need a lot. You just want enough so that you've got a good, firm, uh, physical and electrical connection in there. Need to feed out a little bit more solder for this to work. Okay. Okay, so that's in there. Okay, so that's all there is to it. There's minimal damage to the ties. I don't see any real, yeah, I, I can still see the details on the top of the ties. So I think we had a good one there. Okay, now on these, you always want to do the outside of the rails. You do not want to do uh, the inside here because that solder will interfere with uh, locomotives and uh, wagons or cars or whatever, any type of rolling stock rolling through there. So let me get this set up again. You're not going to be able to see what I'm doing that well, but I'm going to get a bit of solder started down in here and then just run my tip of my soldering iron back and forth. Now, did you see how some of the solder actually came through underneath and uh, made that electrical connection there? So that's a, a great uh, example of how you can get a very good electrical connection by applying just enough solder for it to seep into the gaps uh, between the, uh, the rail joiners and the rails themselves. Okay, let me move it down here and we'll do another one down by the, uh, by the turnout. Okay, so I've moved down to this uh, turnout uh, rail joiner here, and I'm going to install my heat sinks and pull out some solder here so we can do this. Okay, I need to uh, push that rail joiner just a little bit further. Well, you want it centered on the, uh, on the gap there. Then I'm just going to get it heated up. And once you melt some solder, that will um, increase the flow of heat to the rails. Okay. Okay, and I'm just going to flow it in here like that. It suddenly got to the point where the rail joiner and the rails heated up enough so that that solder just flowed right down in there and filled the gap without any problem. So let me do the other side real quick. And again, there was no damage uh, to the uh, to the details on the on the uh, on the ties. Okay, did you see that when that solder flowed through? Okay, so that's a good solder joint right there. So that's basically all there is to getting these good solder joints, and you want that between all of these. You will hear a lot of people say that you need to leave some gaps free, okay, so that you are not soldering them together. And that is true in a lot of scenarios, particularly if you have a um, a layout in a garage or an unheated attic or loft or any place where you're going to have considerable uh, uh, excursions in temperature and humidity, then you need to solder, your, you need to leave some gaps uh, free and floating so that they can uh, expand and contract as need be. On this particular uh, module though, because you know it's only four feet long, um, and I have gaps at the uh, points where the two modules come together and at the end, I'm not too concerned about it. So I'm going to be soldering all of my connections together. You know, but one, one prime location would be at this point where you go from the turnout itself out onto the flex track leading into this long uh, three foot roughly piece of track that goes to the good shed. That would be a good place to leave this uh, solder free here, okay? You can put rail joiners on here, but do not solder it together. And that will allow this uh, joint here, this pieces of rail, to actually move if they need to due to heating or cooling 
and um, expansion and contraction of the metal. Now another concern also is uh, uh, in un, you know, unair conditioned or unheated areas where the humidity can vary quite a lot, you can get expansion and contraction of the layout itself. So at certain times of the year when it's drier, uh, then the, uh, you could expect the wood in your layout to uh, shrink a bit. And then when it's much uh, more moist, it could, uh, you know, it could take up some of that moisture and expand again. So you can have both uh, moisture effects as well as heating and cooling effects. Now, my layout here and in this layout room where I'm building this, uh, you know, it's maintained at about 60 degrees Fahrenheit year round. In addition, I uh, keep a, dehum a dehumidifier going most of the year. Um, outside of the heating season, uh, I keep it going 24-7, and I keep it set at 50% relative humidity. So this room stays basically the same temperature and the same humidity year-round. In the wintertime, it might dry out a little bit because, you know, uh, of the, the drying effects of warm air. But I also run a uh, humidifier in the wintertime. So we keep it at about, you know, the same relative humidity down here year-round, the same temperature year-round. So I'm not really concerned about this. I've never had any problems at all on the Piedmont Southern with uh, uh, with uh, kinking of rails or anything due to expansion and contraction. So, you know, it's something that you have to be aware of in your model railroad, wherever you've got it set up. If you've got it, you know, in a temperature controlled room in your basement, you probably won't have any problems. If you've got it in a loft or like I said, in a garage, then be aware of that and allow some areas to, uh, to float free, to not be soldered together so that you will um, uh, you know, so they will be able to move as temperatures and humidity uh, change. Now, another thing that that affects, however, is you will need to have droppers or feeders connected to both of these free-floating rails to provide power. Even if you have fish plates or rail joiners connecting these rails to the, uh, to the turnout, it's highly unlikely that you're going to have a reliable uh, electrical connection uh, at that point. Well, that's a wrap for today. I hope that answers all the questions concerning uh, laying these turnouts on, uh, on a ramp like I showed you how to build and how to build a ladder and the sequence for that and also uh, some of the details on how to install those blue point controller uh, wires uh, into, the, uh, into the throw rods at the points on these uh, turnouts. So have a great week and we'll see you here on Friday with another video from the DCC guy. Bye now.